Tara and I thought this morning that when we were chatting before, we were chatting about um, really looking at ingredients and going through all those ingredients, mm -hmm. whatever products you're using, whatever your budget is, um, and whatever yet you sort of allocate to yourself to think, I want to I wanna up the ante or I want to do stuff. And also talking to people, I think, Claire, who have done the same thing for a long time. Yeah, you know? I, I think it's getting really confusing now. There's so many ingredients that everyone's yeah. hearing about. Yeah. And there's lots more affordable brands that are ingredient focused, which yeah. is amazing because it's made it more accessible. Much more. But also a little bit more confusing. Yeah. So I think it's really important to kind of know for your skin concerns, for your skin type, what's actually really good for you. Exactly. Yeah. So what you should be looking yeah, so for. So we did that. Yeah. We did a live about three weeks ago. Good morning, everybody. Where we discussed all the different ingredients that could be in any any skincare product and what you should look for according to what you think your issues are so if you feel you have congested skin or very dry skin or um pigmented you know uh, hyperpigmentation um a bit rosacea we did we do a bit on rosacea and, and, and a little, bit, a yeah, little yeah, bit yeah, yeah. And, and looking at those key ingredients and so that was three weeks ago and we listed lots of different um people's products that you could get stuff from so i hope that's helpful you got a coffee i'm hopefully getting coffee a second. <laughs> Like, I, I got the dog. I tell you, I had dinner last night. Sorry, let's just have it. I had dinner last night, and I, I had a very long day. Did yeah. a Guardian shoot, then was doing stuff yeah. to do with you. For, yeah, exactly. For something yeah. secret we can't talk about yet. Um, and um, and I had uh, eighteen, no, sixteen people for dinner in the end. I thought oh, wow. I had twelve. Yeah. And uh, sixteen people turned up. So there was that quick shuffling. You know, I was counting them up on the terrace, thinking, okay, mm, shuffled, and then eking out the soup. As the starter, <laughs> so everyone had this much soup, and an extra you know, piece of bread. <laughs> uh, I, no, I just literally had bread, and then I thought, no, I don't want them to think I'm not eating. So I was like, I then literally, me. I got creme fraiche and marmite, and I put it together to look like I also had mushrooms. <laughs> For yourself, yeah. Oh my god, did I even do you even try and taste it? I did actually. Oh, was it nice? Yeah. See, yeah. I, you either love marmite or you hate it. I love marmite, so I might. Actually I mean, I, yeah. you're, it is. Yeah, it's yeah, 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 god, yeah. I, I do love marmite, and yeah. then I just actually put some of it on my bread. <laughs> anyway, that was my evening. How was your evening? Um, really happy you've tuned in. How was your evening, Claire? My evening was good. Yeah, I just did a walk. I live right by the river, so I did like a little walk last yeah. night with some friends yeah. and my dog. So yeah. I know it was lovely. You've got you to yeah, meet Claire enjoy has the, sunshine. the most amazing Labradoodle. But it's the Labradoodle of the giant kind. I mean, how <laughs> tall is Mabel? No, M no, Mabel's only, she's a medium sized. Mabel. She's a medium yeah, sized. Yeah, she's medium. Yeah, so she's not, yeah. Mabel's a medium sized dog. <laughs> Mabel is like this thing that thinks it's a little lap dog and she it, looks like a lamb like, she looks like yeah lamb. she's so cute yeah. we yeah. got it we got to get them together we do have a lot of dogs by the way at trinity london so if you ever think you'd like to come work here and you own a dog we're incredibly dog friendly yes. we could yeah. in fact nearly be a dog hotel but we could we, we could. could couldn't we okay back 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 to today's <laughs> point good morning everybody and also i need to get my glasses so i can read the comments as well and we've got um, that's my bike Oh, that's your bag. Oh. That's really good. <laughs> that I'm doing it really I'll well. Yeah, good, good. But um, yeah, so now we've done all those ingredients and we've listed all those ingredients and that's two weeks ago on the feed. You can see all the products contain those kind of ingredients. We thought we'd do routines of how you layer skincare. Yes. Because we're always asked this, aren't we? Yeah. Like, thank you very much. Like. The things like, and this I is. I think we have to turn on the comments. Oh my God, we do, we don't we? How do we? Yeah, we love that. There. Oh, 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 we just saw it. There it is. Could you please help with shipping to Greece? Shipping to Greece. Can we find out, darling? Um, yeah. Shipping to Greece, because we've had um, some shipping situations where it's been tricky, but we will find out. Um, uh, Marmite on toast, potatoes, roast potatoes <laughs> is amazing. Uh, Marmite on, on oh, my potatoes. God. oh my God. Oh my God. That's I've delicious. That. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. So anyway, I know people shouldn't comment on people's bodies, but people were like, well, oh, Trini, you're getting too thin. Exactly. It's like, I'm fine. I'm good. <laughs> I'm fit and healthy. Um, so I'm going to physically put stuff on okay. just to show length, but I, I've cleansed my skin. Um, and I think the most important thing when you're in the cleansing journey yes. is that you use a product that when it comes off, it's really off your skin. It's mm -hmm. just such a simple thing. But imagine if you had a film or something still on, everything you put on afterwards is not gonna penetrate. And I think I used to use um, cleansing balms where I would put it on and enjoy the luxuriant thing, take it off, 
and I felt, oh, my skin is really hydrated, but in fact, it was still a lot of oils of yeah, the bath. Yeah, and that so might clog your pores, Clog actually. your pores, and I did have a bit of spots then. And then, you know, a balm, if we talk about size of molecule, now this is technical and scientific, but it's really important when you're layering skincare routines, is big. So if you start with something which has a big size molecule, all those baby size molecules like acids and, and serums that are very liquid forms like hyaluronic acids and things, they can't get in. So that's important that you take things off properly. So in the cleansing stage, we're taking stuff off properly with a hot cloth or with whatever. And I do, you know, when I do my routine, I do our balm and then I do our gel because it's a, a smaller molecule size and it's got little things exfoliating in it. So just think to yourself now and all of, all of you think, yes, I think I'm using the right cleansing or what you're doing so it's really good on this community that we can all talk about what we're doing and and get a sense can i also yeah, just say absolutely. about cleansing yeah. so one of the biggest things for me is that the cleanser doesn't strip your skin yeah, so there's one yeah. thing about cleansing um with a balm yeah. but if you use something that's too harsh and yeah. it actually takes the oils out of your skin that's, that's actually it. worse because if your barrier is damaged yeah everything is out of sync all day long. I know yeah. I ask you this all the time, but what is the skin barrier? So okay, so just like the please. skin barrier is literally the outer surface of your skin, yeah. yeah? And basically it's made you of don't see it. You don't kind of thing, but it's well you do. Well you do. It, it yeah. is it is your barrier that yeah. you're touching. This is yeah. your barrier. So but the skin acts as a barrier. Yeah. And it's made up of what we call like different layers of cells. So mm -hmm. it's like um bricks and mortar, yeah. yeah. And if you use something too harsh, it's actually taking all the mortar, so the cement that's holding the bricks mm -hmm. together, it starts eating away at that and, yeah. and take, removing it so that your skin becomes more porous, but also that you lose more moisture from your skin. So your yeah. skin's drying out, it gets yeah. more flaky. Yeah. And then once anything you put into your skin will just leave your skin if your barrier isn't strong. That's a so good that, way the bricks it, and mortar has yeah. to be really strong. Yeah. and if you use very harsh cleansers it starts to take away the cement mm -hmm. within holding mm -hmm. the brick wall together so then your skin falls apart yeah you put you, red, put you put you put a, a lovely serum on really luxurious serum on afterwards it is just going to leave your skin so you have to keep that barrier healthy mm -hmm. so the wall that is your skin mm -hmm. needs to be really really healthy if that is healthy everything that you put in is actually going, um, to, going to actually work in a better way and so the, and that's what we did with the cleansers i always used to say to you yeah. respect the barrier yeah. and this is about making cleansers and buying cleansers and using them on your skin that actually respect your barrier mm -hmm. that are not too harsh mm -hmm. but are able to clean because okay. the other way is that yeah. if you just let gunk build up on top of your skin yeah. and Bl block all the areas where um all the actives need to go in yeah. then obviously you're not going to get them either so exactly. it is about clean skin and yeah. cleaning skin is important not too harsh and not, and too, not too yeah. soft so so such. if you are somebody we've got a low battery here you might need a charger if you are somebody who you know there's a lot of people also claire who i think they look at their skin and they say is my skin dry combination oily or um or um Sensitive. Sensitive, all right. And I've met lots of uh, people who they think their skin is really oily and they use like a 4 a 4 4A uh, acid cleanser. Mm -hmm. You know, 4 acid cleanser is very strong because it's using HA, BHA, PHA, and maybe maybe two of one of them or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's really stripping the skin because they might feel a T-zone oiliness. So diagnosing and understanding if you have some oiliness somewhere that maybe having a, a cleanser that's for a very oily skin will strip this skin too much and therefore this part of your skin which isn't that oily becomes sensitive as well that's the other thing if you cleanse and strip your skin too much you become quite sensitive and then you have sensitive yet oily skin which is a very difficult condition to yes make. and if, if your skin is very oily and you strip it of all the oil your yeah. skin's just going to keep producing it'll actually speed up the oil production so you actually make your skin oilier worse yeah oh, i didn't know that yes. why is that because if your skin feels like it's been um it's replacing the um the oil that's been lost yeah. it's going to keep producing more oil right. so what you actually have to do is try and balance the oil and do something more a little bit more gentle mm. and do something more harsh okay. so it's always a balance if you have like really bad acne or spots mm. it might be more important for you in that moment to get rid of the spot and use something harsh mm -hmm. than it is to fix the oil 
on the other side. So yeah. sometimes you have to do them at one at a time. First I'll fix the spot, then I'll fix the oil. Yeah. Right. But doing both together is, is to not be, is sometimes very hard. Skin. Yeah. Any questions so far? We're here to answer your questions. Do you have a miracle for neck skin, please? So neck skin. I mean neck skin is something. Can I just tell you really candidly? I'm just yes. gonna be candid. Yeah. We're in the lab right now thinking how do we deal with neck skin? Because there's never, ever, 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 ever been a good neck cream in my mind, but this could take years because we're, we're only at the very beginning of that journey. But it's like, these things are, some parts of our skin are very challenging and more, we'll talk more about later. Oh yes, please, I'm gonna eat on camera, I'm sorry. Really hungry because after my Marmite and Creme Fraiche soup, <laughs> which if you've only tuned in now is like God. Um, things. So you've, you've cleansed your skin properly, whatever you've used as a cleanser, that's step one. Now we, we talked before about there are five elements you always should include in the skincare routine. So cleansing, exfoliating, vitamin C, antioxidant, uh, retinoids and SPF. These are the like the most important crucial things of anything you do. Yeah. So when people use uh, the next stage, which is exfoliation, this is another area where I've seen a lot of people like watching TikTok videos and stuff and just over exfoliating their skin using really strong acids. So understanding what's an acid you put on that you might take off, which could be in a dermatologist yep. versus an exfoliant that you put on and, and it goes into your skin. So I'm gonna just do one from my morning routine because I use Tiptoe in PHA. But I used to years ago, and many people might still do this, cleanse, tone and moisturize. So yeah. for those of you who cleanse, tone and moisturize and you want to kind of think, I want to get ahead of the game now and not just do a routine I've done for 25 years, then a gentle acid exfoliant is like your equivalent of a toner, but it's going to do a lot more because as Claire said, science has come a long way. And the molecule size in these is different for different reasons. So take us through, and we talked about ingredients before in the difference mm -hmm. between HAs, PHAs and BHAs, and for that in depth, we have that three weeks ago. But this stage of your routine, why are we then um, putting on, even in the morning, a gentle exfoliant, and when are we using? So what's great about like a PHA, yeah. so um, a PHA, so that's a polyhydroxy acid, is a larger molecule size, yeah. so it takes a slower amount of time to go down. Yeah. So it's still exfoliating yeah. very gently, but it actually is super hydrating. It's a humectant, so it yeah. attracts water yeah. to the surface of the skin. So I always think that you know the kindest thing you can do to your skin and the gentlest thing, but also the most effective if you're consistent, mm -hmm. is to use a PHA, PHA every day. Yeah. Yeah. It's so joyous using a PHA. And I think nearly <laughs> anybody can enjoy it yeah. you know like this is one great for sensitive skin yeah it actually if you use say the trini london tiptoe in it actually helps to strengthen your skin mm. so it's helping to reduce sensitivity over time not every pha does that yeah. but if you're using one from another brand it's generally about giving you this gentle exfoliation mm -hmm. and also hydration at the same time yeah. so it's so good yeah it really helps to give you a healthy skin and yeah. so and I, you want so you want to yeah. look if you're buying a pha you want to look for things that also <clears throat> in that inky list and we discussed uh, a few weeks ago how to read an inky list which was really good information from claire on certain ingredients that let you know how low or high the ingredient levels are but what else is in the formula? Because acids do like a few friends. Yeah. And the friends in a PHA, as you say, are hydrating ones. So we have, mm -hmm. I never know how to pronounce it, Trellos? Trellos. Trellos, um, which is our hydrating agent. But look at what that is. So PHA is for everyone, sensitive skin, also's, but check what and it's else a good is every in day, that. It's a, it's a good everyday one, yeah? yeah? So not every exfoliant you want to use every day. So a lot of AHAs, you want to use two or three times a week yeah. until you build up to having your skin strong enough. Some skin, people's skin never gets strong enough to use it daily, some people can. Yeah. Uh, but a PHA, generally, you can use every day. Yeah. yeah. I think it's gentle enough, but it's also giving you the hydration. Yeah. Yeah. And we have women who, um, and this is probably, I would say, our most frequently asked question, or frequently say thing, women say, I have really dark, dry skin what moisturizer should I get? Yeah. Right. It's like such a classic question. We have somebody who um, worked with us uh, when we were developing skincare. And I remember when I met her and the first thing I said is Mandy, and she said, my skin's so dry. And I said, Mandy, no, you need to exfoliate your skin. And there's such a difference here between actually thinking pile on moisturizer. And this is to do again with, if you think about that molecule size. So we talk about 
a dusty table or a polish table. So if you've got a dusty table, you wouldn't put a wax polish on it because it would just all not get through to that table. Yep. And that's exactly what happens when you don't exfoliate your skin, however gently or strongly, as long as being an AHA, is that you're, it's like a moisturizer is sort of sitting on top and, doing and, that. and your skin is dry because it's not able to shed off the dry uh, the dead skin cells yeah. so you're you're losing dead skin all day long that's yeah. what dust is made in in your room so but healing, if, isn't it? if if dry skin doesn't actually shed the dead skin cells it hangs on to them a little bit longer mm. so it actually then is creating more of a barrier so it can't nothing can get past mm. the dry skin so you've got to exfoliate it off if you have like skin conditions like eczema it's all based on the fact that your skin is not losing it's not shedding yeah. the dead skin it's building up building up and building yeah. up and it has layers and layers and layers and that's unfortunately they don't have a mechanism in their skin to help so, them shed the dead skin cells but is dry that skin eczema, that's what yes, it does it stops yes. you shedding yeah because they yeah. don't actually have the enzyme that's able to shed the dead skin cells whereas dry skin is the st not it's, that it's linked to yeah. eczema but it yeah. is the same thing of you're not shedding the dead skin cells so you need to shed them so that then you can actually hydrate okay so that yeah. was step two so, so we've done that so we cleanse our skin and we've done a pha this has taken you two seconds so for those of you who think i don't have the time it's about i think it's always about it's like i i might want to say it's like a vanity matrix but you might think oh i'm looking tired or oh i'd like to do something but you think i don't have time any routine your routine my routine takes me about three minutes every morning so yeah, it's really no some time. time so we've done that now next thing i like to do is i like to do a spritz yeah because in between a pha or in the evening i'll spritz so i'm using emma hardy and this is her plump and glow and it's got a tiny bit of hyaluronic acid in it but because it's in a spritz we know looking at the ink list it's far more just about the lovely spritz and that and water it's got a hydration. really nice fine spray on that one yeah it's it, it, nice. yeah, it yeah. spray i have another one by affinity organics i love but the spray is a different spray this is this is like and some people don't like how many of you by the way <coughs> do or don't like a spray because I know you don't love I don't a spray. Like, I don't like to spray my face. Yeah, you it see, feels really yeah, weird. You see, for me, it's like, oh yes. But I'd love <laughs> to know. I'd love to know your opinion. Just try that. Look, she, look at the expression that Claire makes when she does it. It's like, <laughs> but keep it away from me. But that's the All whole right. point. Is like ev everybody's different. Everyone's so different. It's not a step I would right. bother with unless okay. I'm on the beach yeah. and I'm really hot and I just want to cool down. Then yeah, I would take anything. But okay. yeah, it's not for me. Yeah. All right. Personally. So I fucking love it. And, um, but that's cool. You see, we are all different. Yeah, yeah. And then, but from that, there's a little bit of dampness on my skin. So I'm going to reach for, at this stage, something that loves dampness on skin to work. And it's going to be something which might be a hyaluronic acid, which is not that other acid group. It's the hydrating molecule, which holds onto water and some peptides. So I'm actually going to reach for some plump up in this yeah. instance. But it's, this is just, this is just, I'm using it because it's ours, but... We're talking now molecule size, so whatever you reach for after, you could go straight to something that has an oily base if you want to go straight to a vitamin C, but if you're doing a hyaluronic acid based product or a peptide product, this is, look, look at that, just just see the kind Try of- Try and apply the wateriest one first, yeah, yeah as a simple guide, yeah. Yeah? yeah? And the more hydrated your skin is, the more that the actives that are in your serums will penetrate, yeah? So you know, like yeah, this you cement- you me about this so oily, the... uh, this like, like so, so it just is, so I love the, this visual. The, Give the, it a visual. Well, talk to them. The, the bricks, the bricks of mortar in your skin. Yeah, so you have your bricks and you have your cement. Yeah. When your skin is hydrated, it kind of creates these little channels that go through the cement and just delivers all of the actives deep into the skin. Okay. So it's really important to keep your skin hydrated if you want the actives to work. Yeah. If you put it into a dry, barren, like skin, it's yeah. not gonna, it's not gonna work. So it's like, yeah. it's like something dripping down. If there's a lubrication, yes, then it's going it to was, flow, flow down. down yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And if it's dry, it's not. Yeah. It's like using a lubricant during sexual intercourse. It's the only way I can compare it. I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> going to say it. For those of you who are postmenopausal, who maybe a lubricant is necessary, this is exactly my analogy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. But Claire's not there yet, so <laughs> no, she's not. And the other girls are like so mortified and embarrassed. But you and I guys kind of yeah. maybe know that. Yeah. And you know what? There is some. There is. It's really important. And I want to do something. 
How many of you want to do a sex show that we could do one week on Facebook? Because it's about really thinking about how important is sex to you? I just want to just caveat this in the middle before we get on to Fisherman Sea. But how important <laughs> is sex to you? And how much are you enjoying it nowadays? And how much would you like to challenge yourself on enjoying it more? Because I think the release you get from sex and having orgasms fulfills an element of you which otherwise might feel just that it's gone to sleep. And I think that if we open up every side of ourselves as a woman, we have more chance to fully engage with life. So, you know, when I meet women who in their 70s or 80s, 90s, yes, I have, um, who are having incredible sex, there's something about those women that yeah, I think amazing. I want to be yeah. that. I yeah. want to be that. And I never want to lose sight of it. So, um, vitamin C, <laughs> um, we're going to go on to now. So, so vitamin C's can be all different textures. And I wish we had our box. I've got a box of vitamin C's here. Okay. So vitamin C's can be very creamy. They can be oily, like this is an oily one. I don't know who this is by, but you might have something, we can just show different textures, that are oily or creamy. And depending on how oily they are, like if you have a really, really oily vitamin C, and then you put a moisturizer on afterwards that is not you might get pilling so when we talk about when we get pilling things like that are it's going the layering from, of the yeah, products so, yeah so if this stage of your layering is a very oily stage when you're using a vitamin c and it's too oily and your moisturizer is light that's a chance when you've you've put you've got the opportunity so this is a texture here that i'm using which is ours feels silky i'd say but it's not a, a drip feed oil like um, this is ethylene no, it's scorbic acid, it, that's it's not a, actually a, a water-based uh, yeah. vitamin C, so it will be a little bit yeah. lighter. Yeah. And oil-based, if we can just show the difference, so we can show it. We have an oil-based one there, that might be oil-based. But so, I, it, it's about what textures we like, but it's also about the effectiveness of the penetration of the product. And I always put that last bit on my hands because of hyperpigmentation in the summer. And we talked about, if you want to understand the importance of vitamin C generally, please look back at our film three weeks ago because what we talk about a lot is how in the daytime it takes the hit of the agingness of the sun. And if you use it in the morning in your routine, that's what it's doing. It's like, you know, battling away. Your SPF is obviously protecting It sacrifices you. itself for the damage. So the sun's gonna damage your cells, yeah? yeah? unless you have an SPF protection. Yeah. But all that free radical damage that the sun is producing, yeah. that the vitamin C, if you put it on in the morning, is actually going to sacrifice itself and not your cells. So it okay. saves your cells from the damage. So it's vital. And like your best routine is from 25, 30 years yeah. of age, start incorporating a vitamin, vitamin C, C in yeah. the morning and you will like, the future of your skin is going to be so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is it like, makes so, it makes such a fantastic. difference, yeah. I've actually used a vitamin C since I was about 25 and all different types and... That's a bit, that's an oily one. That's an oily one. So you can just see the difference in texture. So this one here is, is oily. I'm not going to say which brands they are, but it's just the dribbleness. Like you can see how it's a slow dribbler and that just gives you a sense. And when you rub it in, so, and also it might just feel quite um, heavy in your hand so lovely texture but then if you're going to put on top of it a moisturizer which maybe if i put on one here like our niacinamide one which is not water-based but it's lighter than our other one it might be that it doesn't like the relationship of that weight underneath and then the lightness on top yeah yeah, yeah. so i think with vitamin c's you do need to shop around yeah and you need to find one that suits your skin yeah. so different skin types like different types of vitamin C and so it's tell also me about which vitamin which which skin types like which vitamin C's and I'm I'm just gonna see um questions as well. So are there any questions whilst we're here? Because you might have seen some faith and yes. then please hold that thought in your thoughts I want to answer that okay. one. Yeah. I've seen one that. that has said how can I tell if my skin is dehydrated or just dry? The coffee test. This is my favourite one. Yeah go on you go so, um if you if you spend a week, just a week of your life, and you can do it, I know some people hate drinking water and love coffee, but if you could spend a week where you change nothing in your skincare routine, but you stop coffee and you drink two liters of water a day, and at the end of that week, if your skin really feels dry, then it is not dehydrated. Because the things that dehydrate skin the quickest are sun, um, 
uh, I would add that also, wear SPF that week, um, coffee and not having water. So that, to me, that's the litmus test of, of working it out. And then if at the end your skin is great, you realize actually then you have to address, might be very difficult to give up coffee. I would never want to give up coffee, but you could up your water intake and that would counteract it. Mm -hmm. Okay, going back to your question, yep. or your answer to this of, of how you decide which vitamin C is right for which type of skin. So I would say, we always talk about like the oil-based vitamin Cs, yeah? And these are the ones that begin. So ascorbic acid yeah. is your vitamin C, yeah? So you're looking for ascorbyl, ascorbic mm -hmm. in the name of, in the back of the pack. Yeah. And then you're looking for something with, starts with tetra. 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 So tetrahexyl decal ascorbyl. Okay or um, is a oil-based vitamin C. So I don't want you to get into the whole name, just look for ascorbic and then tetra, mm -hmm. is the oil-based ones. And I would say if you have dry skin, mm -hmm. then that would one would be really, really good. Okay. Yeah. So there's lots of different types and they're more sophisticated. So the textures are now becoming not just like this oil slick on your skin, yeah. they're actually becoming really sophisticated, really mm -hmm. luxurious. So right. they're really, really nice. Yeah? And then obviously, if you have that dry skin, you're going to be using afterwards a heavier moisturizer so yeah. it won't affect that you've had such a heavy oil so I'm gonna go on now to hydration so we're gonna do a really in-depth moisturizer special next week just of different things that you should look for in a moisturizer and we're gonna have a ton of moisturizers here so you can listen into that and understand according to your price point and what you can afford what you want your moisturizer to do for you and also what what um, because if other um, if other stages of your routine are already doing a lot of things, your moisturizer could just be the, the skin barrier moment. But if you've got things where you're very simple in your routine, then you want more from your moisturizer. I'd kind of, that would be my rule of thumb. And, and also for me, it's like, for certain actives to really have an effect, you need like, you know, a high dose. So for yeah. example, peptides, ideally you would apply peptides twice a day. Yeah. So if you can have it in your serum and in your moisturizer, actually that's really great because yeah. now you're really boosting your results. Yeah. yeah. So I think having moisturizers that do more than just moisturize is a really good thing. Mm. And also moisturizers are there to protect that barrier. So mm. it's really locking things in so that your skin stays as healthy yeah. and everything works better. Like I can't live without a moisturizer and no matter what serums I put on before, mm. my skin is always on that verge of dehydration. So I need to have yeah. a moisturizer. It doesn't have to be a heavy one, but I need a moisturizer yeah. to lock everything in and keep my skin feeling plump. I know this sounds weird, but you know what I start doing now is, is energize me. Yeah maybe my skin has changed a bit maybe it's less dehydrated mm -hmm. because maybe i'm less stressed as yes well. stress yep. by the way is another thing oh, sorry massively, to add yep. into that thing of dry skin in that week try and meditate every day i know i'm throwing a lot in there but but cortisol production uh leads to dehydrated skin and mm -hmm. you release that when you're very stressed but this energize me is enough because look how plump my skin is mm -hmm. just with that and normally I would have in the winter had to have gone and ended up with our more intense moisturizer bounce back which is a more sort of oil you know not oil based but it's got it's more nourishing yeah but this is like that's great like really works. but also consistency in a routine is also key yeah. so if you're doing like if you use a PHA in the morning use your say your hyaluronic acid serum and a moisturizer yeah. every day yeah your skin is naturally going to start being more plump and more hydrated and less dehydrated, yeah. yeah? It's just consistency is also key. Consistency is key. So yeah. SPF, let's talk SPF. Oh, yes. So SPF <laughs> is something that um, we can say this to the cows come home and Claire has some scary stats on SPF, but this is an incredibly important part of your routine. And um, I'd like to talk about the difference between a 30 and a 50. Mm -hmm. All right, so because we've got 30, but you might have a... I'm going to put on 30 now, which is our BFF, but I didn't use anything. Let's just, this is, this is like the Closet Confessions, beauty, honesty moment. In my 20s, I literally used Lancaster number no. six SPF, which was the body burner. And I used it on my face. Uh, in my 30s, I began to use SPF. In my 40s, I went straight into, I mean, probably in my 30s, I did a 30. Actually, my 30s introduced me to a 30. Mm -hmm. Girls, what are you using? I love 50, to... 50 every day. You see, day. the thing is, there's... Younger, yeah. I mean, that, like, that instant reaction, it's like there's this middle group who <laughs> slightly think, oh, I love a tan skin, but, like, 
Both of you are like immediately 50. But, but, but when we all like... And they have great skin. I mean, they're babies, but they have amazing skin. <laughs> I know, but the generations now are much more educated on skincare than, 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 than you, your even, generation if, But mine. even my generation, we grew up with like SPF 2 tang oils. Yeah, <laughs> SPF like, 2. And yeah. also being Irish, that would have been, hey, that's too high. <laughs> you know, just of that lovely, poor Irish, beautiful skin, suddenly like, son! Yeah, you're just like, son, I want a tan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. terrible. Okay. So the importance of having this as a last stage is crucial. And let's talk about amounts you use. Yeah. Yeah, because so, I put on four pumps to just do my face. Yeah, four yeah. pumps. You can either do two pumps and then another layer of two pumps that yeah. dry in. So yeah. I think the, the key thing is that most people don't apply enough yeah. um, to get the actual SPF. Yeah. So that is one of the critical things. So you need a product that you also enjoy using yeah. so that you can. Because like, you know, when it's a thick, greasy cream, it's going to be really hard to apply enough yeah. To, um, uh, to actually yeah. achieve the SPF. Yeah. But for me, you know, the, the SPF factor, so 30 is 30 times your natural UV protection. Um, so your skin is naturally able to protect itself. And when it tans, that is actually your protection, your, your protection coming in. forward. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I can probably burn in, I'd say, 10 minutes of sun. Yeah. So an SPF 30 would give me... 30 times that if I applied the right amount yeah all right so it's so, timesing by the amount in which you it takes would to burn. burn yeah okay do you get that mass sum because my mass isn't always that good but it is a really good way to understand the level of sun um, protection that you need but I would say that 30 is a, like a really good level yeah, yeah? and if yeah. you apply 30 properly and use the right amount then 30 is Gray every day, every day, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think when for me, just as, for protection, but what about actually to look at skin aging? Well, I think it's then you also have to look at the UVA. So yeah. you've got the SPF factor, looks at the, the UVB, which mm -hmm. is about the tanning and the burning, yeah. yeah. UVA is what is the shorter wavelengths that go deeper into the skin and they're actually damaging your collagen and your elastin, so they're aging you over time. So if you want. You want a high SPF to protect against aging, but you also okay. want a high UVA. Okay. Yeah, because right. that is the thing that you need. It's not just the B. Yeah. All right. Um, so I'm just going to end on a incredibly um, uh, exciting thing. Uh, no, I'm going to talk about two things very quickly. But this has just given you that sense of the routine. There's a few things. So one, first of all, is this Saturday um, we are doing a lovely event at our new store, um, which is in the old Bentles, which is Phoenix. Um, being Phoenix Vegas in Kingston and I'm going to be there on Saturday 7.30 till 9.30 we're inviting people um, and uh, do we still have a ticket or two left? Yes. Oh, we do okay and it's do tell your friends if they live there uh, we're going to also sit down with Fiona who's our skincare educator at Trinity London she's going to take you through what you need and I'm going to be there just to say hi and do stuff with um, that's that's a bit of housekeeping out of the way and this last bit of housekeeping which is something that I don't know I just let's just be candid I fucking love our skincare. It took us a long time to develop it. And we've tried, Claire and I, probably between us about 10,000 products over our lives. I mean, literally, the combined... We're effect, obsessed. We yeah. are obsessed. So, the we have this offer in June, and we've done this offer because we have a little bit of Phoebe, lip to cheek, and we have a little bit of mystery eye to eye, and we have our lovely mini mascara we did at Christmas. And... We're going to give that to people if they're coming in and investing and spend 99 pounds on skincare. And the reason why I, because it comes out of our bottom line, want to give you that is because I want you to understand how good our skincare is. It's that simple. And it is amazing. So I'm gonna put on for you because it's very, we chose very generic colors, but I'm gonna put on mystery for you so you can see the color. Mystery's great that it like, it suits so many different skin yeah. tones. Yeah. It literally, I mean, it's a lovely highlighter if your skin tone yeah. is deeper. And for me, especially with this yellow, it's just really neutral. You wear it a lot, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Well, Chariot's my favorite, but I love a bit of yeah. mystery. Yeah. And Phoebe is actually, um, Phoebe is, just, is my, what I wear most days. It is. Okay. So Phoebe, which looks scarily bright in the pox, they're dead, so you pick it will last yeah. you about 17 years. Um, and get a mirror. But for me, especially when I'm wearing yellow, I need a bit of color. So what I like to do is dab, like this, just to get the colour. Do you see how quickly that goes on mm -hmm. there? And you think it's quite rare, but it goes on this really lovely raspberry. Yeah, it's so there. pretty. 
like that and it will last a long time and then I'm going to put a little bit on my cheek here and there like that and then taking this brush and rub it in like that so it's the, it's the quickest makeup look this is like we chose the most generic colors so everyone could take part so tell your friends too yeah. and then I'm going to use our mascara and funnily enough the mini mascara I nearly prefer the mini mascara to the it big mascara. Is. It actually is. It I is don't know what. I mean, the formulation is the same, but there's something about it which I adore. I just, I think I like the mininess, and also it goes on quickly. Mm -hmm. And I and go, that one's a really great everyday mascara. Yeah. Yeah. No clogging. No. No kind of bulking out and getting uneven lashes. I am doing this with a mirror, so you don't think. And then I always go in like this and push it in the product. So I get that sort of equivalent of a little eyeliner. Mm -hmm. And never forget, this is a Ray Morris trick, just right in here we have these little lashes we don't pick up. And also don't be scared of doing your bottom lashes. So there's that mascara. how much it opens your eye. And non-mascara, I know, look how much it opens my eye, because my eyes are piggy eyes yeah. today. <laughs> um, so any last comments you want to add into our live today? Um, I do have one comment that, um I saw. Um, what is the difference precisely between Bounce Back and Energize Me and what kind of skin types should be using them? Shall I answer? Yeah, you want to done. So Bounce Back is slightly more nourishing. It's still quite light in texture, but it's got lots of great peptides and these ingredients are really helping with the kind of fine lines and wrinkles and it's super kind of nurturing and nourishing. Whereas Energize Me has got the, it's a lighter texture, it's kind of gel, refreshing, really great for more oily um, combination, normal skin type, great for the summer for nearly everybody. Yeah. Um, and this one has got niacinamide, which is this energy booster for the skin. It helps with skin tone and texture um and is just like a really good multitasking um ingredient so one is more light refreshing um great for summer for all skin types but especially good for oily combination skin and then bounce back is great for more nourishing um so normal dry i would say and anyone in the winter time yeah, can actually use it exactly. so i I switch between the two all the time. Yeah. You look, you look it's good, sound. isn't it? I mean, a lot. That, was like, a, that is a huge improvement, improvement from my huge very improvement. late night. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah. so simple. So, hope you enjoyed it. And we're going to do, we're going to do all different moisturising next yeah. week. And we'll have lots of different price points. So, if you feel you're on a budget and cost of living is really getting to you, we're going to find the ones also that we think, you know, like there's one that I always recommend if you just want the barrier. But this is from... Aldi and Cura Caviar. So, you know, it's not going to have any active ingredients in it, but it's just going to seal your skin um, mm -hmm. before you put on SPF. So try and bring you some interesting things that can help you. And if you've got money to spend, we've got some things even more expensive than ours. But I um, don't know if they're much better. Um, anyway, so I uh, hope you um, can join some of you in Kingston. And otherwise, we will see you next week. Bye. Bye for me.